he's reporting live. He's there in Kenosha. Julio Rosas joins us now. So if he moves around, folks who are watching the simulcast of the nationally syndicated radio show, that's what you're seeing. Julio, it's good to be with you. I know that you're there. You're kind of juggling a bunch of stuff. First off, I how what's the lay, what's the feeling there right now? What does it feel like? We're waiting for the jury to come back, render a verdict. Um, wh- what is your take right now? What's the what's kind of the mood on the ground? So we're just waiting now for the jury. They started deliberations uh, today. Closing arguments were yesterday. And so, you know, this is always kind of the X factor when it comes to uh, trials, right? I mean, even though this is as high profile as it is, this, this is still normally how trials work. And so, uh, you know, for me personally, I know, again, I, it's hard to predict, but I, I'd be very surprised if we come away today without a verdict. Mm. Uh, but some of the other reporters I've been in the media room with, they said uh, they're more betting for tomorrow. But again, you know, the jury can take as long as it wants. And I will say that if this goes longer than a week, then we could potentially be looking at a hung jury just simply because they need a unanimous uh, decision when it comes to these murder charges. Yeah, that's a very good point. Talking with Julio Rosas, uh, Town Hall Media, he's there on the ground. He's He's been getting video of just some of the people that are outside, but also watching this trial. And he's been giving really good uh, updates about this. The I, I, I wanted to get your thoughts on, like, what were what was the courtroom, or could you, could you see the jury's reaction when the judge and the prosecution, there's some now famous moments where they were arguing with each other, and the judge raised his voice, and the prosecution, the prosecutors, Binger and Krauss, they were raising their voice as well. Uh, I, what was the, what, how, what was the reaction of people in the courtroom to that? Uh, so I wasn't in the courtroom when they were in, when they were arguing uh, with each other, but I, I will say that was a pretty significant event, just, just because. Uh, you know, this this whole idea, you know, people have been kind of theorizing that because they've had such a bad case, the prosecution uh, to begin with, uh, that maybe that the prosecutor was actively trying to go for a mistrial. And I think the judge was actually uh, kind of picking up on that if that was the case, because he, he was starting to say, like, I have no idea why you're doing these things that regular people with any trial experience know they should not be doing. Right. Mm-hmm. He crossed the line two times. Uh, and you know that, that's a little bit too long to explain right now, yeah. but uh, but it, it but the jury was not in the jury was not in the courtroom when when those took place. Okay, uh, that, that that's that's a key. They were he, the judge had to ex- had them escort out of the room before he could admonish the prosecutor. Which, in my opinion, which I get why he did that, but in my opinion, the jury should have seen. Yeah, <laughs> uh, should have seen that just because. I mean, especially with uh, ADA Binger, he, he definitely is kind of one of the reasons why people don't like lawyers just in general. Yeah, exactly. Talking with Julio Rosas of Town Hall, who's there in Kenosha. This, I, it's weird to me. I heard this morning, I actually only realized uh, last night that the jury wasn't sequestered. How That seems yes. incredibly unusual for a case of this high profile. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised, too. The, the, the judge um, at the beginning of the trial, he was saying that, you know, he, he does have the authority to, to sequester the jury, but he didn't think it was necessary. Um, and, and, and I believe his words were like, you know, I, I don't see why this is such a kind of high profile trial, which is uh, kind of an interesting way of looking at it. But uh, I will say, yeah, that, that is an interesting move just because, you know, there, there have been threats of doxing the jurors. There was that incident last week where someone was filming the jury when they were getting picked up by the bus. And, you know, supposedly the video was deleted with that. We didn't, I mean, wow. uh, we don't know if it for sure, but um, I mean, I, I guess the judge just has a lot of faith in, in how they will carry out this, this, this verdict. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if I have that kind of faith because there's, there, there's questions as to whether or not, you know, some of the stuff that the jury members can see what impact that has on their decision-making process and you know how that how what what kind of verdict they're going to come away with guilty or not guilty i know that there are the lesser charges that they, they were they were told that they could consider uh the i know that there's what i think 500 national guardsmen uh that are uh on standby uh in anticipation yes. of an acquittal i would imagine i mean really probably either way but an acquittal for sure do you think that there i, I mean this might be kind of rhetorical at this point but is there going to be more rioting if there is an acquittal, just say he's found not guilty. And do you, because I know Kenosha residents seem to be so fed up and tired with this. I mean, you know, we hear about businesses that are still boarded up in the last riots. Are people serious? Would they seriously do this again to this town? 
I, I, you know, riots are always kind of hard to predict. I mean, anything can happen with that. But no, yeah, they, but yeah, they are absolutely uh, tired of it. I mean, th this is something that has been hanging over their heads for, you know, since last year, since everything happened. And they were kind of bracing uh, for anything. And they really hope that, you know, whatever the verdict is, that people just accept it. And then so that this town can finally move on from, from this chapter. Because, I mean, yeah, they, they have to have 500 National Guardsmen in, in the next county over uh, in, in, in reaction to potentially rioters uh, not being happy w w with the verdict. And that's just that's just a sad state of affairs that the country is in right now. Mm. Um, but but it, it's it, but that that's the reality that that we're living in. And, and I think when, when it comes down to it, I mean, it, the, the, the whole reason why we're in this position with this case in the first place is because not enough was done the first time around right. to really put down the, the the riots, not not the peaceful demonstrations, because there, that did happen. But that was during the day. Yeah. At night, it was a riot. And the night in question on August 25th, where you know Kyle Rittenhouse shot, uh, it was a riot. It was not a protest. Yeah, that's a, a, a very, very important point. Talking with Julio Rosas of Town Hall Media. I got to ask you, Julio, were you in the courtroom uh, yesterday? When, when the very no. theatrically, well, I, I know you saw this as well. Uh, Thomas Binger, uh, assistant DA, very theatrical. <laughs> you know exactly where I'm going with this. Now, everybody, uh, yeah. Julio, sir, he, Julio's a veteran. He's a Marine. So he understands proper firearm handling. I am shocked that either the judge didn't stop and say there's a better way to do this, a bailiff didn't intervene, or, you know, like a uh, deputy or trooper, somebody. Because he... Bring he grabs this he grabs Rittenhouse's rifle and finger on the trigger not even shouldered properly and his flag the, and I, the breach won't even open flagging everybody in the courtroom apparently including the jury I love some of the the expression from one woman who was sitting there I mean she clearly realized that something was wrong and she had a very interesting expression it was all over Twitter um, I just do theatrics like that do you think that's going to work in this case or are people going to be like you are totally an incompetent prosecutor that actually is making our mind up against you in your case i i mean i think so obviously you know i, I don't know exactly what the jury uh is thinking right. when it comes to that but no i mean it just it just highlights that there's a lot of you know the people who are in charge of pro you know prosecuting people uh especially when it comes to you know the handling of a firearm uh, they can't even handle a firearm properly themselves, and 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 yes, you know it was unloaded and all that, but that, but the, you know you treat every weapon as if it were loaded. It doesn't matter if you know you still got it because they're also we can end up in an Alec Baldwin type situation. Yes. Uh, and so no, I, I I almost I couldn't believe because from from the video because you know his back was turned, so we, we couldn't see that his finger was on the trigger. But even just him pointing it the rifle in the general direction of people, that right away was a red flag. And then it wasn't until we got the pictures from the AP where it shows, oh yeah, and it, it, I, it's just you know this guy needs to he just needs to stop. Yeah, this was a, this is a very it's a weird case. Some say that, and I agree with. Uh, people, uh, some of my friends like Andrew Bronco and others who say this case shouldn't even progressed to trial because it's clearly, you know, it was self-defense. But, you know, here we are very it, just a very odd case. You're on the ground. I know you're watching uh, and you're there to uh, to cover any developments for town hall if a verdict comes in. And if there's a right. Are there people that are coming into town or is it just like people who are that live there in Kenosha that have been protesting? It's been a little bit mix of both. I did meet some activists from Milwaukee, uh, so not not out of state, but uh, but there's also just some also uh, people who are from the town because I mean at, at the end of the day there are still right. activists in yeah. the community, yeah. uh, and so but no it, it's it's a little bit of mix of both and and I will say that with some of the riots last year it was also a mix of people here from Kenosha riding but also people from Chicago and and Milwaukee we there's even a case uh, yeah, people coming from Minneapolis which. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, very different. Julio Rosas with Town Hall. We so appreciate all the great work that you do. Stay safe up there, my friend, and we'll be watching your account and reporting and all the videos you take for developments. Thank you so much, my friend. Stay safe. Thanks.